All right, now we're ready to do that repair on that power supply board out of that LG monitor. Um, of course, we have the power supply board. You're also going to need solder, desolder wick to remove the old solder so we can remove the capacitors, diagonal cutters to cut off the leads of the new capacitors, the replacement capacitors. Uh, these are available, this full set, uh, as a kit available on our website at www.ccl-la.com or there's a link um, below the video to go directly to that where you can order the kit for this model. Uh, then you'll also need a good 30 watt soldering iron to do the solder work. Um, first thing we'll need to do is remove the capacitors off the board. Um, easy way to do that, uh, you can take the solder, soldering iron, you melt one leg of the capacitor's solder, and then on the other side of the board, if you tilt the capacitor up a little bit, that leg will pull through the board. Then you can do it on the same thing on the opposite side and just kind of work it through. And we can remove the capacitor once you have it off the board. Then you take the desolder wick. You put it on top of the solder that remains on the board and heat it up with a soldering iron and that wick that wick will absorb the solder and leave you with a nice clean hole to mount the new capacitor through. Uh, that's one way you can do it. The other way to remove the solder with the wick is while the capacitor is still on the board, you know, you can heat up the solder through the wick like this. It will get absorbed can we go to the next terminal, do the same thing. And then we should just be able to remove the capacitor. Either way, both ways work. Um, just do both of them, see which one you prefer the best. Now when we're replacing the capacitors on the board, as you take the old ones off, the values of the capacitors will be written on the side. This particular one is made by Samoxin and it's a 1000 microfarad 25 volt. Both of the ones we just removed are the same voltage and rating. Let me take the two from the kit and we're going to put those onto the board. Now if you notice on the board one side of the little circle that indicates where those capacitors go has a little white line on the side of it and that's the negative terminal. The opposite side of the board has a little positive terminal. Of course that's going to be the positive terminal. On the capacitor itself one side of it has a gray stripe with the little negative symbols repeating. That's the negative side of the capacitor. You can also tell by the length of the legs. The positive side, the positive terminal, is longer than the negative terminal. So we're just going to put those onto the board, insert those two in. And if you just hold them in place and then flip the board over and separate the legs so that the capacitors stay in place till we get them soldered. And you just take your soldering iron, touch and hold it on the terminal for just a moment for it to get hot. Then when you apply your solder, the solder will liquefy and make a nice shiny solder connection. You do want to make sure that it's nice and shiny. If it kind of looks dull, that's what's called a cold solder joint and you just need to heat it up and apply a little bit more solder and make sure that it doesn't move while it's cooling for you know two seconds or so and then you have a good clean solder joint so now we've replaced those two capacitors Then you just take your diagonal cutters cut off any remaining leg that sticks through the board so that it's nice and flush and we've just replaced the first two capacitors on that board now we'll just go through and replace the rest of them same procedure. It's really best to, to do you know, one at a time or two at a time if they're the same value and the, they're located next to each other, like those first two. That way you don't get confused as to which value goes into which location. 
Um, if you do get mixed up on this one, uh, we do have on our website, you know, part of the repair guide, the capacitor locations with the appropriate values. So you can refer to that and it will tell you which ones to put back into which location. That one just fell out all by itself. So you, you do want to make sure that you do have the capacitors with the positive and negative terminals going the right direction. Um, if you solder one in the wrong direction when you apply power to it, the capacitor will immediately short out and could possibly damage other components on the board, so it's always best to uh, you know make sure that you're installing at the correct orientation. And what I just did there with the uh, diagonal cutters is once the solder wick gets full of solder, uh, you know that part is has been used at that point, and you just use the diagonal cutters and cut off part of the end. Know, pass up past the solder uh, so that you don't have to keep working with used solder wick. Now on the capacitors on these boards uh, you do need to make sure that you're getting the right type not just make sure on the values which are also important but the type of capacitor is also important. These are high speed switching power supplies and you need to make sure that you have capacitors that are rated for that or you can have failure you know, within a week or two of the new capacitors that you just put in. So you need to make sure that you're using low ESR, high temperature and high ripple current capacitors. Um, the ones in our kit have already been Know, selected to be the proper ones for this, but if you don't want to get the kit and you're just get, you know, trying to find capacitors yourself, uh, places like Radio Shack are not gone, going to have the correct capacitors. Um, you know, you probably need to mail order them if you live outside the United States and you want to get them. You know, we can ship them to you. We ship worldwide, but if you want to try to locate them at a local store, you need to make sure, like I say, that you get low e low ESR high ripple current and high temperature capacitors that may meet the capacitance the correct capacitance ratings. You know, each of the capacitors um, has it marked on the sides of what the uh, ratings and values are uh, as far as voltage and capacitance. Uh, so that would be the information you need for that and the Packaging on the capacitor should give you information about whether they're low ESR or not if you're buying them individually. And then we have one left to do. And now we have one rebuilt power supply. We're ready to take it back over to the monitor, um, install it, and test out our repair job.